So as the introduction acts, so as the title states, this is a review for a laser cutting slash laser engraving machine, specifically the Longa Ray 5, which is a 10 watt machine. I also believe they make the same one in five watts, but I have the 10 watt machine. The 10 watt machines are becoming more popular. I don't know exactly if this one does the same thing, but it's because they're combining two five watt lasers to get a more powerful, um, laser in the in a 10 watt form which um, cuts a little bit better which is nice because that's mainly what i'm planning on using these for so this introduction is going to be rather long i'll put a time stamp in there if you want to skip it but mainly because there's a lot of information to cover which also translates into this being a rather long video because i tried to cover a lot of ground these lasers are really cool tools. I've been trying to get my hands on one for quite a while now. Um, I had a couple other companies that didn't work out. Um, there were a couple time restraints as well. So I've had a couple of these opportunities fall through and I finally got my hands on one of them and I've been playing around with it for a little bit. Now, if you're watching a lot of videos, I try not to be redundant on these. A lot of people are unboxing them, putting them together, and I'm not knocking these. I watch these videos myself. And then doing a bunch of tests, tests engraving, test cuts to show you the capabilities of the machine. So for this video, I tried to steer clear of that as much as possible because there's already such great information out there. I also have another laser I'm testing, and I quickly learned that um, the settings for one laser do not necessarily work for another laser. So going through a bunch of settings and what um, speed and power I'm using for certain things is not necessarily going to be useful for a wide range of people. So like I said, I tried to pick projects I've seen these lasers perform and make them. So there's a lot of a couple of projects in here with one big project being this lampshade, which I do at the end. Um, so that's kind of the main the main goal of this video is to be informative but also kind of get people aware of what these machines entail um, in layman's terms you can set one of these up you can start engraving easily in an afternoon but there's a lot more capabilities that involve other programs um, potentially paid software and there is a steep learning curve if you want to start doing stuff like making your own designs, importing them into a program and have them printed out. Now, a lot of what you'll see is people um, engraving or cutting out their logo. I do that in the video as well. Um, I think those are so successful because a lot of people's logos are simple graphics. So the program can read that very easily. But basically the program which I'm using, which is a paid program, even though I'm still under the free 30 day trial is Lightburn. That's the most popular one. Lightburn most successfully reads SVG files, which are vector files. So all the lines and curves in your, in whatever it is you're, you're engraving or printing are smooth. Um, programs like Photoshop, which I'm used to using, um, work mainly in JPEGs and Photoshop files. So if you try and import JPEGs into Lightburn, it is doable. I printed out and engraved my logo, but as you start to get into more detailed things, which you'll see later in the video, you run into problems. So what I'm doing right now is a lot of people recommend Illustrator, but Illustrator is kind of expensive. So I'm looking into Inkscape and that will make it so that I could start actually making my own designs, transferring them to Lightburn and printing stuff out. Um, in the video, if that's not something you're interested in, I will show you about how you could buy a lot of files on Etsy. You just have to be careful with copyrights. Most of the, uh, the files on Etsy are not going to be okay with you buying them and then selling their, uh, you can't sell their plans, but then making a product to sell off of their plans. You will write and in, run into some copyright issues, but for a plain hobbyist, that is an option. But like I said, the goal is kind of to give everybody a well, a pr quite broad spectrum range of what they're capable of and, and what to expect when buying one of these. So like I said, simple things are very easy to do, but um, if you want to start designing your own stuff, be well aware of the fact that there is a little bit of a steep learning curve. 
I've been using this laser for about three weeks. Um, this company originally wanted me on a two week timeline to get the video out and I told them that just wasn't enough time to test it. Honestly, when I'm doing these two world views, I like to play around with these tools for at least a month or so just to get a good idea of how they work. I don't like putting stuff on the channel that I haven't thoroughly vetted. But um, I've ran into this issue with other companies that also wanted the two week timeline. So this company was willing to work with me in my timeline, which is why I'm reviewing their laser. And um, it's been a little over three weeks that I've been, been using this one specifically. But as always with the tool review videos, and I have gone back and updated my other review videos, I will keep you posted on how this is working. Um, the big concern I see for lasers is going to be the longevity. I haven't had any issues with this one, but like I said, it's only been three weeks, but I have read some stuff online about lasers losing power over time. I can't really tell if that is uh, fake news or real news yet, but I have read that. And obviously that is only something you'll be able to decipher over the course of time. So I, in general, this is a positive review. I really like this laser cutting machine. Did not have a lot of issues with it. If you're not technically savvy, like I said, um, simple images are just a matter of importing it into the machine, making a few, importing it into the program, making a few adjustments, and then you can start engraving. But then you could take it as far as you want after that point. So it is a positive review. I haven't had any sort of problems really with issues with the machine. I had somewhat of a homing issue with this one in the beginning, but that is because I couldn't find online, but I don't believe this machine has limit switches. If anyone knows if that's true, let me know. So I had it set to auto home in the beginning, it was causing some issues. Once I turned that off, I haven't had any problems with it. But um, in general, I do think these are very cool machines and I am planning on using it quite a bit in the shop. So like I said in the introduction, I'm not going to get a ton into setting this up and all of that other than it comes in a nice box, comes with ample instructions. Um, this machine and the other one, a lot of the instructions are on uh, USB, which I don't love because you're using your computer for instructions and programming at the same time, but it does save paper, so there is that. This one is made primarily of extruded aluminum and uh, the gantry rides on these edges. The biggest pain was mainly going to be getting the tension of the belt set in place, but even that wasn't too bad. It's fired up right away. You can use this wirelessly. You could use it, um, send your files with an SD card, but for the time being, everything I'm using I have hardwired. So like I said, I am testing another machine. So you can see I have the, my logo engraved from that other machine. This one, the touchpad for this is actually quite nice, especially since I'm new at the program. It's much easier to just use the controls to set this where I want it and then frame it to make sure it's in the right spot and start engraving um, until I get a little better at using the program. For this machine, I've pretty much solely been using um, the error controls. And like I said, this was my first engraving. I had this put together in about an hour, loaded up and ready to go with light burn and engraving fairly quickly. Um, but like I said, that is a logo, so it's a fairly simplistic image. And you can see this one burns much darker. Now I have the exact same settings set up for this laser, the longer razor, and the other one. This is not a sign of the laser being poor quality. It's just to show that the settings don't really translate between lasers. This one was obviously a little bit stronger and it made a darker uh, engraving. So the next thing I wanted to do was try engraving photos. I'm not really planning on doing this a ton in life except for presents or whatnot, but I do think it's a cool process, so I wanted to give it a go. Um, I did a couple test engravings on a piece of poplar. I chose poplar because it has a very fine grain. Um, the grain is what's going to make these engravings not as nice, but any sort of organic material like wood, obviously you're going to be dealing with the grain and it affecting the pattern. 
So that's what I did. I started on a couple multiples. I have these photos. Both of my sisters had uh, babies this year and I, I photoshopped them into funny photos. So I had this on hand and that's what I chose to try. I was actually pleasantly surprised with the quality of this engraving. This is on par with anything I've seen online. You're not going to get a crystal clear engraving on wood um, unless you have a ton of computer programs and knowledge of those programs. But right off the bat, this was pretty easy. Um, like I said, there I don't think I show it in this because I was also testing this on the other one. But I had four other engravings on the other side. And these are all the settings I'm talking about that you mess around with. I'll put a link in the description to a video that taught me how to play around with these settings and what they all mean. So then um, I wanted to try this on canvas. I've seen people doing these on canvases and I also wanted to try it on wood. So the first one I'm doing is wood because I have lots of lumber laying around the shop. This is actually particle board that has a wooden veneer on it. I painted, spray painted one coat of white and then one coat of black and I wanted to try this out. Like I said, I had these photos already in my computer. So those are the ones I was using and this is actually turned into a birthday present for my one sister. So you can see it's just a uh, veneered particle board. I use this because this is going to be very flat and very true mater material, even though I hate particle board. That is one of its strong suits. So you can see all of these ones I pre-tried out, messing with the resolution and settings until I got one I liked. And then you can see that's the blown up version there. So the one problem with wood, once again, is that little bit of grain, even though it is veneer, showed up right through the middle of the photo. And that's when I saw that you could also do this technique on canvas. So I went out and bought some canvases. But the general gist of this was you, you edit these photos outside of Lightburn. At least that's the video I watched. I believe you can do it inside Lightburn, but I'm pretty versed in Photoshop and photo editing programs at this point because I've used them quite a bit. So it was just easier for me to do it that way, but I believe you can edit these photos in Lightburn as well. And then it was just a matter of like you saw, I did three or four of these before I got the ones I wanted. When you start getting the resolution too high, I know this probably sounds counterintuitive, but the picture starts getting grainier. So um, you really are gonna be playing around with the, the resolution. But very quickly, in order to do this sort of thing, the settings in Imager, which is the free program you can use, is Norton White Tile Painted Black. So engraving on a darkened surface like this, what it does is it takes the original photo, it basically flips it or inverts it. So in this, what you're seeing is the darker colors are going to turn up white, which means they're going to engrave deeper into the material, exposing the white spray paint at the bottom, and the lighter materials are going to show up darker, which is what the inversion is. So I've seen people do these canvases. Like I said, I only painted white and uh, white on the bottom and black on the top, which is what the, the photo was. But I've seen people do these with multiple different colors. You have to start doing lots of tests to set the laser settings so that they're exposing the different layers of colors with different speeds and powers. Um, there is a lot of testing with these lasers to get all your settings right. But once they're right, um, I didn't change any of the settings from the, the melamine plywood to this one. And then I decided to try this on canvas because I just thought this was a really cool technique. So, um, so far you could pretty much tell pretty quickly if it's going to go to the right depth, which it is because it's revealing the white and um, leaving the black pretty much as is. And the engraving's nice, it works a little bit faster than cutting. So I was doing other stuff in the shop and I accidentally bumped my vent towards the end of that engraving and I knocked it off. So um, you could see the top is a little off and I had to make two. So lesson learned on that one. And then I just made a simple frame for this. And um, that's basically what that process is. Like I said, on a simple photo like this, tweaking the settings was not too terrible. If you watch the videos I'm going to attach in the description, you could easily learn the, the same processes. So then for the big build of this video, I'd gotten this book quite a while ago about making geared clocks. 
it's a lot of scroll sawing out parts to and then sanding them to get exact dimensions it's not really that sort of tedious work is nothing I'm super interested in so I thought I could try scanning these images and porting them into the program and printing out these gears the problem is is the plans were double-sided so you could see it's showing kind of a faded gray gear so when you put it in here the basic um, no frills version of this is you get an image you're going to trace it that trace creates an outline and then the program can cut it that's basically how you're going to cut stuff out but the problem is because it's double sided it was showing gray and that's what it was cutting all of that pink was registering as cut marks and it was cutting this sort of crazy pattern so what I decided to do was I blackened in the gear in Photoshop and imported that so then when I trace the image it created a nice outline which you'll see once I once I get out of this box and I was I figured that this would cut nicely so that's what you need you need just a basic outline if you're looking to cut things and it did it created this rather nice gear and I was pretty excited about that but when I took it over to the the plans it's just off enough and I've messed around with these clocks enough to know that they have to be perfect in order for them to work so that wasn't gonna work um, I put it in here because you'll see I use that method a little bit later but then I decided to kind of make these lampshades I saw this really cool one on Etsy and the plans were only four dollars so I thought for the build video I'll make that the dimensions were the wrong size so I was gonna have to modify this which I thought would make it a little more unique than just taking someone else's plans and making it if you're buying these make sure that the plywood they're cutting is the one that you have it has an SVG file so you can import it into Photoshop and um, this one actually came with dimensions but a lot of them don't while I was in there I noticed that someone was selling these laser test files so I'm gonna highly recommend these you can make all of this yourself but this is nothing I'm interested in sitting at the computer and, and typing out so when you buy this he gives you what's that six different tests you can import his files right into Lightburn and then do all your tests so this is what I recommend for someone who doesn't want to spend time making all of this themselves you could see it's multiple layers with speeds and power so that you could try this out on every material and figure out what your settings need to be because they're going to be different for not only every thickness but every material certain woods are denser than others certain metals are denser than others so you could buy I think it was four dollars for all of these which I think is super affordable and you could test it out on all of your pieces before doing your settings you could see how nicely that vent in the back is working to remove all of that smoke so like I said instead of pulling your hair out trying all of these different settings I highly recommend getting these test cuts there's an engraving one and a couple others as well um, you could see this is uh, eighth inch birch veneer pine uh, plywood and then this is quarter inch red oak with all of the test cuts and it cut through both of these pretty easily so then back to the lamp um, I'm making two of these because in the move the movers broke two of my lampshades so it ended up working out nicely that I needed a build project for these lasers and I saw that saw that lamp so I'm going to start by just test cutting out some of these pieces like I said before with your files make sure they're the right sizes because all these slots and everything unless you completely redo the drawings if you try and scale them up or down all the dimensions are going to change so I'm actually making this out of quarter inch plywood because I just did a rather large project where I have a ton of scrap quarter inch ply even though the plans were for eighth inch you'll see how I work around that even though I'm telling you to buy the dimensions but that's because I kind of completely redesigned the whole armature for this so these are what the what the program will cut out and then um, I was able to take some of the veneer off of that plywood in order to test this out and see how everything will fit together but it's pretty cool that you could import these files and just have this cut cut all these these crazy patterns and stuff out so when they send you this and you buy it you can see it has multiple files 
I'm going to be importing the SVG and this is what it will look like in your computer. Now my bed is only 100, 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters which is about 15 and 3 quarters by 15 and 3 quarters. So obviously I can't print this all out at once. So what I can do is always have a master file and I could delete the parts I don't want which will be those all those armatures because I have to make different ones because I scaled this up by almost 8 inches and then I could just kind of place these pieces which I kept the exact same dimensions I just printed out a lot more because mine ended up being bigger and I can just print out sheets and sheets of these so that's basically how you very quickly can can size these in and I could save this file as a save as so I don't um, save over the original and then window preview will tell you about how long it's going to take for me the speed was at 10 and the power was at 90 and I think it was three passes but I changed it to four at some point to get through this this red oak now I had this laser going for multiple days because I had to cut out I think it was 76 of these big uh, triangles and then 18 of the small ones as well as all the harps har uh, the armature pieces so I had it going for quite a while and it never overheated or anything like that the back side you could see it cut through nicely I could pop all these out and start creating a stack of these pieces so I kind of figured out that in order to modify these designs I should have um, a sample to start with so I did have some eighth inch plywood laying around and I cut out a couple pieces in order to use those to scale up to a bigger size so this is the size of the material the plans were made for and that's basically how it's going to look it's just these armatures there's a circle on the bottom a circle on, a, on the top to hold everything together and these little pieces just hang in these hooks and um, there's two different armatures so that the pattern offsets so what I did was I drew a basic arch because I changed the shape of the arch the one in the design was more of a circle kind of wanted more of a, almost a teardrop shape so you can see I'm just using a piece of metal to draw that arch and like I said all this could be done in a program like Inkscape but I just um, didn't have enough time to learn that program in order, as well as everything I learned for the laser in order to get it out on time so I decided to draw all of this and I modified the armature because I liked being able to see the top part of the plywood a little bit more so I made those pieces more prominent but you can see there's two different two different uh, size armatures so then I transferred that to paper and I drew it on paper and I scanned it so I'm using the exact same process I did for the gear because the gear had to be exact math this doesn't have to be as perfect so I scanned it I imported it into Photoshop deleted the background combined the two because this is about 15 inches flattened the image and imported it into Lightberm and it did it traced it quite well you can see this is my test cut and everything fit in there pretty nicely but it was still a little rough and I did this quite quickly because I didn't know if it was going to work so that night I spent the time drawing um, exact dimensions because the this these are now quarter inch but you can see the problem with this method is see how it creates this kind of double line and that's because the scanner picks up a lot of material and light burn picks it up as well so it kind of wanted to cut these weird patterns like I said for gears it won't work but for something like this it is a way it is a little bit of a workaround to using something like Illustrator so then this these are the that was the the, the fi uh, file I drew overnight and then I made new ones and like I said these worked the only problem I had was the scan wasn't coming in perfect and the gaps which I perfectly measured and drew at quarter inch were shrinking in the program instead of spending a ton of time fixing this what I decided to do is I have a quarter inch piece of key stock, key stock and it wasn't all of them it was just a couple I had to take a little bit of a sliver off in order to get my leaves to fit and all I did was um, draw on each one take it to the scroll saw and, and cut them out 
Um, obviously, you wouldn't have to do this if you had proper plans, but for this project, it ended up working out and it wasn't a ton of extra time. So the top harp piece, which is what I'm calling it, ended up working out fine in quarter inch because now all my grooves are in quarter inch because I redrew the armature, but the, I would need a new bottom. So I put it together and measured for a new bottom, which was about 12 inches. And then once I had the one side, like I said, these are offset. What I did was I drew the frame of that on there. And then I started placing these triangles to make sure I could get the proper offset. And once again, I'm using the original, and this is where buying these plans comes in, to, comes in handy because I'm basically using the offset measurements so I don't have to calculate them myself. Um, they overlap by a little over an inch. So I could then mark that on my original, overlap by an inch. You can see that's where the mark is. So that groove has to start there for the, the mirroring armature. And then I could just take my original move it up to match that mark and then redraw all of my my pieces so this was like i said a workaround to not knowing the program yet um, i'm sure in a couple months when i get versed in this program i'll be laughing at how easy it was to draw this and how time consuming it was to do it the way i did it but for the time being um like i said this is this was the easiest way to do it with that program so that's what that basically looks like. You can see it's two different shapes with one starting higher up than the other. And the, each armature, a small triangle starts at the top and then the other one, the small triangle ends at the bottom. I overlaid them just to make sure that the, the bumps were in between each other and it worked out perfectly. And then I did the exact same process. I scanned that into the computer to make sure that everything would fit. And um, some of these, I just haven't popped out all the centers yet. And then I could set these up on the, the top harp part, make sure they overlap perfectly. And then there's 18 of these armatures, nine of each. I could print them all out and, and start putting this together. Now for the bottom circle, what I did was I just blew up this drawing. And you'll see why this worked for me, but it might not necessarily work for you. Um, so you can buy these plans and modify them a little bit. Um, can't get crazy with it, and you'll see why in a minute. But for me, it was worth it to buy these plans and modify them. So this is my new ring, which is 12 inches. You can see it next to the old one. I scaled this up quite a bit. But the problem is that groove, which was an eighth inch groove, is now bigger than a quarter inch. So when you scale these things up, everything gets scaled up. The grooves and everything, the dimension doesn't stay the same. So I kind of made a quick little stand in my shop so I could start putting this together and it was pretty simple. So since I had to cut out some of those grooves, most of them fit in place snugly quite well. I was pleasantly surprised, but there were a handful of them that were a little too loose. So that's what the hot glue gun is there for. But most of this is just dry fit together and it's staying in place. I've already been moving it around um, and testing it out on, on different lamps. So you can see this part's obviously the most fun is, is putting everything together, but that one was a little loose. I put a little bit of glue on there. The reason I did that is eventually this is gonna all have to be sanded. I haven't decided if I wanna finish on it, if I wanna clear coat it, what I'm gonna do with it. So the hot glue is enough to hold it in place, but easy enough that when I do have to take it apart, I can. And then obviously this is what it looks like at night. And I chose this because I do like the cool pattern it creates. With the other laser, I'm gonna be making a completely different style lampshade. I haven't fully decided if I like this one yet. Um, in the daylight, it kind of looks like a Chia Pet lamp, but um, we'll see. We'll see if I decide to keep this one or make two of the other design I have floating around in my head.